Hey everybody, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Uh, we have four big stories for you today, um, including some stuff about Metroid, um, Pokemon rumors, believe it or not, uh, along with some other interesting stories as well. Uh, but before I get into it, I want to remind you we are giving away three copies of Metroid Dread for the month of October. Just feels appropriate. Dread, Halloween coming up, all that jazz. Uh, so all you have to do to enter is be subscribed. And let's get right into today's Nintendo news. All right, so our first story today is just kind of a fun one because I missed it the first time that it happened two years ago, and now it's happened again. So a Reddit user named DaveBoy2000 has hit the max limit of hours your Nintendo Switch will count. If you guys uh, don't know your Nintendo Switch, if you go to your profile, it counts how many hours you have been playing in your most recent games. It can get a little fud fugly sometimes, especially when you have multiple Switches like I do, so the gameplay hours get reset a lot. But um, what's interesting here is this person did it with Animal Crossing New Horizons. They hit 9,999 hours played. Here's the thing, in order to do that, if you do the math, he would have had to play 18 hours of Animal Crossing every single day since launch to even hit that number. That is insane. That is more than a full-time job. Of course, it's highly likely he had his switch set in idle in the game because it'll still count the hours when you do that. Um, it's not saying that he didn't play a ton of Animal Crossing, but it also means that this particular switch, maybe he has another one, but at least on this Switch, he pretty much couldn't do anything but play Animal Crossing if he wanted to do this. Uh, so I find that to be utterly fascinating. And the thing is, he had to have played because when you think about 18 hours a day, why couldn't it just be 24 hours a day? Why shut off the Switch at all? But um, it is what it is. I think that uh, it, it's just fascinating to see people hit it. Clearly, this is a case where this person's either got a lot of free time on their hands and is super addicted to Animal Crossing, or... They just planned this out to see how quickly they could hit that max limit with a new release. So um, it's still kind of neat. This has actually happened, as I mentioned, two years before we saw proof of this. Somebody pulled it off in Breath of the Wild back in 2019 and hit 9,999. Obviously, that number has not increased with any of the updates. It's also incredibly difficult uh, to get that amount of hours in a single game. Not that it's not possible. Some of you guys have probably done it in MMOs. You've done it in... Uh, you know, even game, you know, never ending games like Fortnite, maybe Call of Duty Warzone. I have no idea. But um, bottom line is, uh, it's crazy. I'm not here to judge how much time you guys spend playing games. Um, let's just say I wish I had 999,000 hours in the last year to play video games. That would have been probably more enjoyable than a lot of other things in adult life. But um, that's really cool. Uh, so let's move on to the next story. Uh, so our next story is a weird one. Um, Bandai Namco. You guys know who they are, right? Very popular um, Japanese developer. Um, you know, the, literally the grand, the grandparents, the father of several classic IPs. Here's the thing. They're changing their logo. And uh, here you go. Here it is. I, I, I don't get the change. I, I, I personally enjoy the original logo. Uh, obviously, the original logo had a lot of originality to it. This logo feels very... New World Corporate, um, it doesn't seem as fun, but uh, yeah, they decided to change the logo, and um, let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. Maybe you're a huge fan. Let me know if you are and why. All right, this next one is supposedly a new Pokemon game has leaked. Now, we got to be careful here. You know, Tim Foyle had it on. I can't reach my Tim Foyle hat right now, but whatever. Pretend this is a Tim Foyle hat. Um, this is coming from a Twitter account who's known as a Pokemon insider, Centro Leaks. They've been leaking Pokemon stuff for a long time. And we've actually known technically a Pokemon game is coming after Legends Arceus for some time due just to browsing things like LinkedIn and seeing what people are working on uh, that work at companies like Game Freak. And there was uh, something that we noticed earlier this year that told us they're making something beyond Pokemon Legends Arceus, which that's not a surprise. It didn't really mean much at the time because, hello, they're always making something. What I find interesting, though, about this particular case is what Central League said. If this is true, 2022 is going to be insane. 2022 will be very exciting, too, for Pokemon fans. 
even more than 2021 if nothing gets delayed. So obviously we know Pokemon Legends Arceus for sure is coming next year. So what else could be happening? We had new Pokemon Snap this year. Obviously uh, we had um, Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl. So I, I keep thinking like what the hell could be better? Well, what if we're getting Legends Arceus and Generation 9? I, I, I'm just trying to imagine what is happening at the Pokemon Company, what is happening with Game Freak. I don't know, but apparently we're getting multiple Pokemon games next year. One of them probably major beyond Legends Arceus. Uh, so that at least is the current plans. If nothing's delayed, fascinating. I also always thought with Legends Arceus coming really early in the year, that really opened the door to the possibility of a holiday Pokemon game too. Uh, but we'll, again, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, they like to keep that money train going over at, at Pokemon Company. So something's clearly in the works and we'll see if it happens to land in 2022. So last up, uh, we have to, an update on a former rumor that we did earlier. I think earlier this week, or maybe it was last week. It was from Emily Rogers who put out there that Metroid Prime was basically getting a full-blown remake, like completely from the ground up in terms of the visuals. It was going to look like a modern game using maybe the old game's physics and all that jazz. Well, here's the thing. Um, this was disputed by some because, hey, remember Emily Rogers? Wasn't she one of the people who said we're going to get the Metroid Prime trilogy? She only mentioned Metroid Prime trilogy once, four to five years ago, um, and wasn't even sure at the time that that was what it was going to be. It was just kind of an assumption based on a small bit of information she saw. Uh, and she has never repeated that since. Other people have repeated, oh, we're going to get Metro Prime Trilogy. Oh, Metro Prime Trilogy is almost done. But Emily Rogers hasn't. It doesn't really matter because no, the Prime Trilogy HD or this Prime 1 game haven't actually been announced. But we have another, if you want to call him an insider, he's at least a video game journalist, kind of, sort of, reconfirming what Emily Rogers said. This is Jeff Grubb, and I know some of you people are not going to be happy with Jeff Grubb because he said we're getting Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD this year, and we're not, and like he moved the goalposts, and now he's saying it's probably going to be next year. Maybe it'll be the year after. I have no idea. I get it. He doesn't always get everything correct. He does get a lot more right than people give him credit for, but um, yeah, it, it, sometimes things change, and his information it changes with it. So, I want to get into what, what Jeff Grubb um, said here. He basically said, hey, this is what I heard. It's coming. Get over it. <laughs> um, that's, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, he basically said Metro Prime 1 is coming. That you know He originally thought it was the trilogy, uh, but he said that was just an assumption. It wasn't based on known knowledge. And now that he goes back and re-looks at how we got all the information and what was actually said, he agrees it's probably going to be a Metroid Prime 1 remake. So this is really, really cool. I obviously really want this to happen. Who doesn't want a Metroid Prime 1 remake, right? Like, who doesn't? Are you insane? Anyways, we also have to get Metroid Prime 4, and we have Metroid Dread coming out next week. So we obviously have a lot of Metroid love happening from Nintendo lately. So let's just keep that Metroid train going, baby. Yeah. All right, folks. I'm Nintendo Robo Dance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.